All right, stop me if you've heard this before, but the Surface Pro 7 is a little bit better than last year's model. I know that doesn't sound crazy, but there's a lot of good improvements here. And today, well, I'm gonna go through all of them in my full review. Stay tuned. All right, now before we get into the full review, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a spoiler alert here to make sure it's worth your time. We're just gonna go through the list of actually what's new in the Surface Pro 7, because otherwise if you look at this device, you're thinking there's nothing here and it's kind of boring. But let me tell you, all these internal changes are really welcome. Let's go through that list. All right, first up, there's a USB Type-C 3.1 port. So this is the most exciting feature that's available here. Now, it is not Thunderbolt 3, which is a bit unfortunate, but that Type-C port is pretty powerful. We'll show you why during the review. There's also now Wi-Fi 6, which is really nice. And get this, it is no longer Marvel. It is instead an Intel chip. Now, Microsoft has had a lot of problem with Marvel in the past, but Intel is a pretty solid chipset, so I'm really excited to have that on board. There's also now Bluetooth Wireless 5.0 technology. That's also part of that Intel wireless chip, and Bluetooth 5 is really nice to have. There's also 10th gen Intel processors, which is a big deal. Those are the 10 nanometer ones as well, and they benchmark pretty, pretty well. There's also now Iris Plus graphics. These are a step up from the Intel UHD 620 ones, and they do give good performance. They're not a dedicated discrete GPU, but they're going to give you a nice performance boost. There's also now DDR4 RAM, which is really good. Previously, we had DDR3. Now, this is a small minor update, but DDR4 is faster and a little bit more power efficient in some cases, so it's nice that they have it here. We also get a Surface Connect Plus port. So that's going to allow rapid charging from zero to 80% in under an hour. So again, really nice to have that on board. Plus you get to use your Surface dock and previous Surface accessories. There's also now what are called studio microphones. So there's two of them on the top of the device now, which is supposed to help during your Skype calls. Not a big deal, but still nice to have there. According to Microsoft, the best microphones they've ever made. And finally, there are new colors for those type covers, including poppy red, which we have here, and icy blue, which look really nice. All right, now before we get to the meat of the review, let's give a hardware tour. If you're new to the Surface Pro line, this will be really interesting. If, however, you're a Surface Pro veteran, well, a lot of this will be kind of old. Let's start with that display. It's still a 12.3 inch pixel sense display. That's a 3.2 aspect ratio at 267 PPI. It's a really nice display. Not much has changed this year, but it benches pretty well. So we're getting 98% sRGB, which is actually just a hair off from last year's model. There's also 73% Adobe RGB and 72% of DCI-P3. So it's a pretty good display. Um, brightness is going to be a little bit over 400 nits. So it's a pretty bright display, but this is actually an area where I'm going to kind of nitpick with Microsoft. Don't get me wrong, you get this device, you're gonna love the display, it looks really nice. But let's talk about what everybody else is doing, including HDR 400 with Dolby Vision. You also have anti-glare displays, and a lot of companies are now using OLED. None of that is with this device currently, and that's a bit unfortunate. Now regarding the camera, you're still gonna get an eight megapixel autofocus front-facing camera that has the Windows Hello system built into it. This is where everything kind of comes together for Microsoft. So this device actually turns on super, super fast. It almost feels like an ARM device to me, and that Windows Hello system is just super fast now. I think this all has to do with the 10th generation Intel chipset but it just works well. It's also one of the best web cameras you can get on a mobile device, so that's nice to see. Now turning to the keyboard itself, the type cover. So the good news here is if you're upgrading this device from a previous Surface Pro, Pro 4 and up, you can still use those type covers. There's actually nothing new this year with this type cover. The trackpad is the same size, the key travels exactly the same, the brightness is the same. The only thing that's different is you can get a few different colors, but yeah, if you're gonna upgrade, you can just reuse your current type cover. Now I'm a big fan of Microsoft's type covers. I think they're just really excellent for typing on. I have no complaints about them, just good key travel feels nice, especially when you angle it up. And that trackpad is really excellent. Yeah, I sure I wish it was a little bit taller, but I'm not going to complain. All right, now let's talk about the ports of the Surface Pro. Not a lot going on, but still pretty good stuff. USB Type-C 3.1, it's finally here. It replaces the mini display port, which for me never made a lot of sense, but I guess some businesses and enterprises kind of appreciate it. So what can you do with that Type-C port? It is not Thunderbolt 3, which gives you 40 gigabits per second transfer rates. Instead, it's a lot less than that, but it doesn't really matter. You can power two 4K displays with it. You could also recharge the device. So if you have a Type-C charger that's 
that's a 45 watt, 65 watt, or even 100 watt, you can just plug it in here and recharge it. You can also use type C hubs, which we have a couple here. So you can plug those in and now you can use a bunch of type A ports, HDMI out, you can recharge it with a type C pass through. It's a very powerful port. And although it lacks Thunderbolt 3, and I know a lot of you guys are gonna harp on that and I kind of get it, but for most users, all they want is this universal port. And that's what this delivers. So it's pretty awesome that it's here. Now you also get a USB type A as a fallback for your legacy devices. I know some people would get mad about that, but we have a thumb drive, no worries, it works here. And you get that new Service Connect Plus port, which gives you that rapid charge. But otherwise you can use your old charger with this device. The charge is actually the exact same one as Surface Pro 6 and Surface Pro 5 before it. And finally, under the kickstand, you do get a micro SD card slot, which is kind of nice to have. I don't use it a ton myself, but I know a lot of people do. You can expand the memory that way if you want to, but it's just kind of cool to have. Finally, you also have a world facing camera on the back. So you can take snapshots of say a whiteboard or free or in a class. You want to take notes, you can take photos, insert it to your OneNote. Really nice to have. You may not use it a ton, but it's a good fallback to have in case you can't reach for your camera phone. And there's also the Surface Pen. Again, nothing new this year. This is still the intrigue system they've been using, 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. You do get the new colors as well. So you get poppy red and icy blue if you want those. But otherwise, again, you can use your old Surface Pen pen, or you can use the Wacom Bamboo Ink dual protocol pen if you have that as well. Now when it comes to that Surface Pro pen, I use it for productivity myself, including annotating PDFs and note taking, and there's where I think it excels. But if you're an artist, well, some people actually like Apple's version with the pencil a little bit better with the iPad Pro. I'm not an artist myself, so I can't really comment on it, but it's something to consider. Still a lot of artists use the Surface Pro 7 for drawing, and there's no reason why you can't as well, but keep that in mind, there is a little bit of controversy there. Now let's talk about power and performance, which a lot of people care about this device. So this is running 10th gen Intel processors. Those are the 10 nanometer ones, which only the Dell XPS 13 2 one which is currently on the market is running in. It's a really cool chipset to have. So what do you need to know about it? The Core i5 and the Core i3 versions are still fanless, and that's really important. Core i7 does have a fan. So you wanna get a little bit of noise with that one. That one, I presume, is super powerful. We're running the Core i5 version here with 256 gigs of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM, and performance is really good on it. I'm just gonna give you the context here. The Core i5 from this year will actually be last year's eighth generation Core i7 and all the benchmarks we have used. So that's really awesome because it's still a fanless system. So last year you had a Core i7 with a fan. Now you can get that same chip a little bit faster with a Core i5 without. And that's really good progress that we want to see from Intel. Now when it comes to graphics, yeah, it has Iris Plus, which is an improvement over the Intel UHD 620. It's not a huge improvement though. It's a modest bump. Basically, it's going to sit in between the Intel UHD 620 and an MX150. So it sits right in between those. So yeah, you can do some arcade style games on this, but this isn't really a gaming PC. So don't look to really play any first person shooters. That said, this is a PC. If you ramp down your graphics all the way, Heck, I could play Crackdown 3 on this. Yeah, it'll play. It doesn't look great, but hey, it works. But overall, the performance has been really, really good on this. The Core i7, I think, is going to be reserved for really high-end people, but most of you will be totally fine with the Core i5. If you want to save a little bit of money, grab that Core i3. Now, when it comes to SSD performance, it's okay. This has never been Microsoft's strength here. So you're talking about 2,000 megabytes per second for reads, but only around 800 for writes. So that's definitely below the market in terms of performance, but you know, you don't feel it when you're using it. DDR4 RAM is also nice here, so it helps the whole package. Overall though, in using this device, it seems super fast to me. It's very responsive, especially when you turn it on for the first time. It just instantly turns on. It's a really nice experience. I really like Intel Tension. Speaking of thermals, again, the system says cool. We'll throw up some thermal images here and you can see it yourself, but the temperatures are well within comfortable ranges and never got hot, even without a fan. It just never really got hot, even after running a 25 minute benchmark. So that's good to see. Now, when it comes to battery life, I haven't been able to use this device enough myself to really weigh in on it, but we did run PC Mark 10's battery test, which is a rundown test, and it's called Modern Productivity. And what it does is it uses things like Word and Office and web browsing, as well as video conferencing, with occasional idle times between that. And the score came in right around eight hours. So that's actually pretty good. It's all day battery life, but it was less than last year's model, the Core i5 as well, which peaked around 10 hours. So I don't know 
know what's going on there. Maybe it's just not fully optimized, but I think for most people, this should be good. Now, if you're going to use this for gaming or really pushing that GPU, battery life will take a big hit. You can go down to five hours with that, and gaming does really push this GPU on there. I saw a 20% drop in an hour, so uh, just be aware of what you do with it, but battery life overall is pretty good on this device, and I'm impressed with it. All right, so let's bring it all in. The Surface Pro 7, yay or nay? <laughs> well, it's a yay for me. Now, I haven't been a huge fan of the Surface Pro series for quite a few years, at least initially. I appreciated them, but I didn't use them myself. They were always a little underpowered, they were a little bit noisy, and battery life was never good. That started to change around Surface Pro 5, and by Surface Pro 6, I actually really started to enjoy these devices. The Pro 7, to me, just feels like the pinnacle of this device. The processor is really good. Like I said, the Core i5 is now more powerful than the last year's Core i7. That's just awesome. You got DDR4 memory. You now get that Intel Wi-Fi chipset with Wi-Fi 6, so it's a little bit more future-proofed. The pen and inking experience is good. Typing is excellent. Everything about this device this is just the perfect form for this form factor. And I think Microsoft really knocked it out of the park. Now, if the design bothers you a bit because it doesn't look like the Surface Pro X, I totally get that too. We do expect that though to happen next year in late 2020. So if you want thinner bezels and a little cleaner design, you may want to wait for that device. As to why they couldn't do it this year, well, the Pro X was designed from the ground up for an ARM chipset. Had they thrown in an Intel chip in there, it actually wouldn't work. There was just not enough room for thermals, or so I've been told by some people who know. So if you're going to want that new design, you'll have to wait. But if this intrigues you as your device, you're looking to get your first Surface Pro, this is a killer laptop to have. If you're upgrading, I can't say going from the Pro 6 will be a huge upgrade outside of that Type-C port, but still, if you can afford it, go for it. Anybody else that's coming from a Surface Pro 4 or lower should definitely look at this out. It's just gonna be a huge upgrade for you. And overall, I think Microsoft did a really good job. All right, so there's a full review of the Surface Pro 7. It is now available. If you want more information about it, well, just go to the description below. We'll have all the links there, including our full review, which has all the details and benchmarks that you're looking for. But let me know in comments, do you think Microsoft did enough this year for this device, or are you more excited for that Surface Pro X, which, yes, we'll be reviewing in the coming weeks? Let me know. Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.